Welcome everybody, thank you for joining us. So uh, today's uh, webinar as part of the Live Lounge series is about the transition to university. So I'm gonna be joined by a few different people in today's um, show, uh, I say show, webinar. Um, and first, we're gonna be joined by Tom, who you can see on the screen. Tom, who is a student wellbeing education officer uh, at the University of Lincoln. Um, Tom, do you wanna say hey? Yeah, hi everyone, good to see you. Um, yeah, looking forward to chatting through some really good stuff with you today. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Fantastic. So um, I know uh, you're going to kind of talk a little bit about kind of homesickness. You're going to talk about different mental health issues, the support you can get um, specifically at the University of Lincoln, but university in general. Um, and yeah, I think actually I don't want to talk too much. If we just get straight into it, I'm going to hand over to you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Curtis. So yeah, my name's Tom. I work for the Student Wellbeing Centre here at the University of Lincoln. Uh, and like I said, we're going to look at a number of different topics um, around the transition to university. Uh, but what we're really going to focus on is um, things like homesickness, um, adjusting to change and talking all about the support um, that is available as well. So like I said, we're going to kick it off with homesickness. Um, homesickness um, first and foremost, it's a completely normal thing to experience when you come to university. You know, university is often a place that's quite far from home. So sort of missing home and, and home life is a completely normal thing um, for you to experience. And we'll talk through some stats around it um, and some myths around it as well. So the first thing to note, like I say, completely normal. Over 70% of new students um, experience homesickness within the first few months um, to varying degrees as well. You know, some people might find it really bad. Some people might miss home just a bit. Um, but a lot of people will be in the same boat as you in terms of homesickness and, and sort of those feelings that you may experience when you come to university. Um, so first of all, I guess, what is homesickness and why do we feel it? So it's not just missing home uh, and home life, but a sense of feeling potentially a bit out of place as well. You know, finding yourself in a new environment somewhere, um, you might feel a bit lost, a bit out of place. And that's, again, a completely natural, normal feeling to experience. Um, but that could be part of homesickness. Um, it's also important to remember that it is a mixture of emotions as well. Um, it can include periods of happiness. Um, so not all of homesickness is bad. There can be bits of happiness um, but with that may come sadness as well. Some people may experience loneliness as part of it and potentially frustration as well. You know, they want to come to university and everything to be perfect. Um, so there may well be a sort of sense of frustration there as well. Um, again, perfectly normal emotions to feel. Um, sometimes you can never feel prepared as well. So you've got a massive checklist to look through before you come to university, whether it's the practical stuff, you know, packing all your pots and pans, your bedding, what you're going to take to your room, your dorms, things like that. Um, you can do all the preparation for that and all the preparation for um, university itself in terms of studying and how you're going to feel and your support networks. But sometimes you can never quite feel um, prepared as you'd like to be for that. Um, a big part of well is expectations. What expectations do you have about university? You know, people come to uni with a lot of different ideas of what it's going to be like and how it's all going to be. And sometimes the reality doesn't quite match up to that. So those expectations can have a bit of a knock on effect um, as well and make us feel a bit homesick, a bit like missing home um, and elements of home life. Definitely. Um, but it is really important to remember that if any part um, of your university doesn't meet those expectations, that it doesn't need to affect your whole university experience. You know, university is made up of so many different elements, um, whether that's the studying side of things, whether that's sort of being independent, whether that's the social side, which um, some guys are going to talk through later. Um, there's lots of different parts of university. Just because one part doesn't meet maybe your expectations, doesn't need to have a big knock on effect. Um, and reflect kind of your whole university experience. That's really important to remember. So some myths about homesickness then. Um, a big one we often hear is I shouldn't feel homesick as an adult. A lot of people feel like when they come to university, they're adults now, they should be sort of really ready to go um, as an adult. I shouldn't feel things like homesickness. Um, well, that's completely false. Homesickness can happen at any age. You know, I'm, I hate to admit it, but I'm 30 now and I still miss my family. They live. Um, about three hours from Lincoln um, and I still miss them all the time so it's completely normal to have those feelings. 
Um, homesickness only lasts a week or so. Um, again, that's another false one. It's different for everyone, but what we tend to find here is just a bit longer um, than a week, sort of in terms of time periods. Um, but again, that's completely okay. It's important to remember not to compare yourself as well and what you're going through um, to other people and how they're managing sort of that transition to university. Um, you know, everyone's journey is different with it. So take it at your own pace, but also be prepared that actually, um, if you do feel homesickness, it, it's sort of around a week, probably a little bit longer that you might be sort of experiencing those feelings. So some more myths then, calling home will always uh, make me feel better. This one's a bit of both. Um, sometimes um, it's a really good thing to call home. You know, you get in touch with them, you get to speak to friends and family and sort of get to experience a bit of that home life as well. Uh, but sometimes it can actually make you feel worse as well. It can make you miss it more. Um, it can become sort of a, a crutch, I suppose, as a coping mechanism. Um, so calling home absolutely is fantastic. Um, but we always recommend being careful with how much you use that um, to deal with your emotions around that side of things. Um, this is never going to get better. Again, that's completely false. There's lots of things you can do um, to help with homesickness and will, it will improve with time. You know, you've got to give yourself time to settle in as well. You know, it's a big transition moving across university um, and people put a lot of pressure on themselves for everything to be absolutely perfect. Um, but we're, what we would always advise here is take your time to settle in Give yourself sort of that grace as well. Give yourself some kindness and give yourself that time to really settle in and adjust. You know, things don't have to be instant. And like we say, it's a big adjustment to university. So what we're also going to touch on is um, adjusting to change, what that might look like, um, how it can be difficult potentially, and then some tips around helping yourself as well, you know. We recognise that the transition to university is absolutely massive. There's so many different elements that make up that change. A big part of it is living independently, a big part of it is your academic studies and how different they might be to the teaching style, learning style you're used to, um, the social side of things. There's lots and lots that are kind of expected of you when you come to university. And we recognise that, you know, our support service is here to help support with that adjustment as well. Um, but we're also going to look at some of the potential barriers of that as well. So why can it be difficult? And again, different people will find different things easy and difficult. So it's really important not to compare yourself to others with how you're feeling. Um, even positive change can sometimes cause us stress and worry. Absolutely. You know, moving to university is on the whole a really pos like positive change in lives. You know, we appreciate it might not be for everyone, but university on the whole is a fantastic um, opportunity for people to um, grow as people, learn new things, get their degrees. Um, it's a really normally a really good positive experience for everyone. Um, but with that comes some worries, you know, you might be worried about living by yourself, you know, doing the cooking, the cleaning, um, doing the laundry. There's lots of different things that people might worry about in terms of that. They might worry, you know, they might not get with their course mates, they might not enjoy their course. Um, these small elements, you know, they, they can really cause um, a bit of a barrier uh, to sort of that adjustment period as well. Um, but again, remember university is made up of lots of small parts um, and not to let the smaller parts kind of um, impact on your whole university experience. Um, you're going into the unknown, um, away from everything familiar, which can be, you know, a scary thing for people, people potentially leaving home for the first time, you know, maybe they've not spent a night away from home, they've not been away from home for long periods. You know, you are going into sort of unfamiliar territory. Um, so that can bring about some worries as well. You might experience some physical reactions about it as well, whether you're feeling tired and fatigued, whether you're sort of starting to experience headaches um, or difficulty with your eating and sleeping. You know, we recognise here that sleep makes up such a big foundation as part of your well-being. Um, it's really important you get the right amount of sleep for you. Um, and that can be a really um, a sign really that shows up first that something might not be quite right. So definitely keep an eye on um, all of these things uh, when you're coming to university. Um, and if you are worried about them, definitely get support from um, the right services as well. And then again, expectations. Sometimes coming to university is not what we expect. Sometimes we build this massive picture in our heads of what university is going to be. We've got it all planned out, but then you get into the reality of it and it doesn't quite meet those expectations. And again, 
um, it's those small things that shouldn't really have an impact on our big university experience, you know. Um, just because one part's not quite right shouldn't affect the whole thing. So, yeah, be careful and manage your expectations, absolutely, about university and what it's going to be like. Um, but also recognise that those feelings you feel um, are completely normal as well. And there is support out there um, if you do want to discuss support and get support from wellbeing services at um, whichever university you go to. You know, we've got a great team here at Lincoln. Um, but the services we offer here will be replicated uh, at universities um, wherever you end up going. So some things you can do to help yourself then, what can you do to get yourself prepared for that adjustment uh, coming to university? Rem remember your self-care. Do you need to change anything? Self-care covers so many different things, but it is things like we've talked about your sleep, uh, your eating, your exercise, um, your rest and relaxation, it's all about looking after you to be the best sort of student, the best version of yourself that you can be. Talk about your difficulties with others, whether that's professionals like us at Student Wellbeing, your friends, your family, um, definitely um, share and talk those issues through with them. Um, a problem shared is a problem halved, it's a great expression around that, so definitely get talking. Be kind to yourself and recognise the good. Like we say, sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that everything has to be absolutely perfect when we come to university, um, but that's certainly not the case. You know, be kind to yourself, give yourself that time to change uh, and don't be too harsh on yourself. Uh, and again, keep in touch, but not too much. Calling home is great, but make sure you use it in an appropriate way and in a way that works for you. So you're not sort of reliant on it, but you're finding it helpful when you are calling home um, to, to discuss things and discuss something about university and, and sharing sort of that experience with home as well. So there's some things you can do. What I'm just going to touch on is um, the support that we have here at Student Wellbeing and what we can help with. Um, so hopefully you can see um, we cover a lot here at Student Wellbeing from things like learning differences through to physical disabilities, uh, mental health, um, things like homesickness. We've got great support around that. Um, exam stress. Um, we cover a lot of different things here at Student Wellbeing. Um, and one really important or helpful thing, I suppose, for us is if you are applying through UCAS, um, please put some, if you, if you feel like any of this applies to you, you don't have to have a diagnosis, but if any of this applies to you, please declare it on your UCAS because then your information gets sent to the right team here, so it'll come through to us here at Student Wellbeing, and then we can have the conversations with you ahead of you starting um, around what support would be beneficial for you. Um, so definitely put it down and we can get in touch and have a conversation with you about, you know, the support that's right, what we can and can't support with, uh, and we can have that sort of discussion with you ahead of your study. So you come into university sort of as best prepared as possible, really, so you know the sort of the support that is available to you. So if you do have a diagnosis, there is further support you can get through um, what's called a pass plan and through um, Disabled Students Allowance, DSA. So pass plans are like learning support plans, personalised academic study support plans, or PASS as we call them. Uh, if you have a diagnosed condition, then we can look at um, academic support for you, and that can be things that you have already in place um, that you need to transfer across to um, university, things like extra time for exams, exam concessions, things like that, um, that would be via the pass plan, but you do have to have a diagnosis for that. Uh, and that's sort of specific to the University of Lincoln, that's how we work um, in terms of pass plans and academic support. Um, disabled Students Allowance or DSA, again, you have to have a diagnosis to access that, um, but that support is available sort of around the country. Um, it's for extra help for students who have a diagnosed condition or disability, like we say, um, and that is sort of extra help that can help you with your studies um, and covers a lot of different bases that works really well with um, the past plans we have here in Lincoln. So one of the main ways to access support is what we have through our walk-ins, where it's sort of same-day support. You can get in contact with us about what's going on um, and we can have a chat with you and look at the right support options with you. Um, and these can be done in Lincoln face-to-face -face or remotely via phone or Teams as well. And I'm sure similar services in different universities um, will offer the same sort of access and support. We also have skills groups, so things done in more of a group setting um, rather than one-to-one -one, and our guided support as well. These cover a number of different topics. Um, but if you're uh, potentially concerned around any of this, things like resilient, resilience, confidence, 
Um, you know, that's a really good way to start the university if you need a bit of support in that area um, and helping you manage any anxiety you have at university as well. Um, and then we've got more social groups like our allotment and Sky Garden. Um, we cover a lot of different topics with our group work and guided support. Um, so that is available here as well. And then we also have access to specialist support, things like counselling potentially um, or referrals into partnerships across the city, um, whatever that need may be. You know, we're really well connected here at Lincoln um, and sort of make sure we get the right support for you um, from a wellbeing perspective. And like I say, that covers things like mental health as well. So definitely reach out if you want to discuss support around that. So these are our contact details. If you have any questions about wellbeing specifically, absolutely get in touch with us. Um, give us a call or an email. Um, you know, we're happy to answer any questions you do have about that prior to coming as well. Uh, we're happy to have those conversations um, with you. So definitely, if you have any questions about anything, get in touch with us, and we're happy sort of to answer those. And then just wanted to quickly highlight as well further support you can get at university. So whilst we deal with sort of the wellbeing side of things here, there are other support um, systems in place at the university you can get in touch with. So you've got student support and advice. Um, they help with um, finance, financial assistance, housing and immigration. Then you've got Lincoln Students Union Advice Centre. Uh, they're independent from the university and they can offer support around academic issues housing and finances as well. Uh, and then we've got the fantastic Res Live team who you'll be hearing from later on. Um, and they can help again with things like settling in, um, any students in, in our sort of university accommodation um, and the social side of university as well. They run some fantastic events at Res Life that I'm sure they're gonna tell you all about and how you can get involved. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the support that's an offer. Like I say, we are more than happy to answer any questions you have. Um, and um, yeah, please do get in touch if you do have any questions. Thank you so, so much, Tom. That was really informative. I didn't know most of the things that you touched on there. I was furiously writing notes. My first question actually was, so you, you said that you're three hours from home. So where are you actually from originally? So <laughs> it's a bit of a complicated one. So I lived down in Essex till I was about 12. And then I moved up to the Peak District for my teenage years. And then I came across to Lincoln. Um, for university. Um, so my family now all moved back down south. So um, they're all down in Essex. So I'm kind of a, a real mixed bag, really, from where I'm from. So here, there and everywhere. But you're, the, you're a southerner really at heart, which is... which is. Oh, it's hard. It's been over half my life now that I've not been there. So I don't know. Tom, don't fight it, please. Don't fight it. Um, I should have just said I didn't actually introduce myself at the beginning. So my name is Curtis. I'm the London Stakeholder Manager. So uh, I work in uh, London for, for the university. And what I also did want to say as well, guys, anybody who's watching this, if you do have any questions or any comments, please do put the comments uh, in, obviously, the comment section. And we will obviously do our best to answer them as well. So please do do let us know. I've got another question for you as well, Tom. Um, you mentioned there's, there's a lot of things that you can do um, to kind of help with homesickness. What would be your top two things that you think would be useful if you're feeling slightly homesick when you go to university number one i would say is always talk to someone you know we have a fantastic well-being team here that can help support you with specific support but sometimes it just needs to be family or friends just to get it off your chest um definitely chat to someone you don't want to be sat by yourself sort of dealing with it left alone to deal with it um so whoever you kind of your safe people is, I suppose, definitely chat to them um, if you're worried. Um, and number two, I suppose, get prepared. So um, know who your support network is. So actually, if you're um, coming to university and you feel like actually, you know, just want to be prepared because if this happens or that happens, who would I talk to about that? Where would I get that support? And again, it doesn't have to be professional services, it could be friends and family. So um, those are kind of my, my top two, yeah, be prepared and definitely talk to, to someone about how you're feeling fantastic thank you so so much Tom. i'm sure you'll be around at the end of the session as well if there are any kind of questions specifically for uh student well-being okay thank you so i'm now going to introduce shante and anna uh who are also joining us from the uh, student from the res life team um and I think we've got Anna on the screen and we've now got Shante on the screen um, and they are going to do a presentation all about the amazing things and tell you a little bit about themselves and the amazing things about settling into university accommodation 
and that transition. So I'll hand over to you guys. And then of course, if you have any questions, as I said before, please do feel free to put it in the comments um, and then we can answer that at the end as well. Hi everyone. So like Curtis said, me and Anna are from the Res Live team and we're just here to talk about um, our university experience. So um, I'm Shante, I have been a res high student, I actually started this year. Um, I'm a third year English student. Um, I'm hoping to pursue a career in publishing and I am from Manchester, as you can probably tell. And I'm Anna, I'm also a res high student assistant. This is my third year, my second year doing the job and I'm a third year math student. I'm going to pursue a job in teaching and I'll be doing my teaching qualification next year. And much like Tom, I'm also from Essex, so also quite a way up. So we're just gonna talk about a little bit like uh, life at uni. Um, so you get to learn who you are, your dislikes and your likes. Um, depending on where you go, you can be ended up going to a new town, city or country. Um, it's also a chance to explore. I know coming from Manchester, from a big city to Lincoln, it was uh, quite a big difference, but uh, Lincoln has amazing uh, things with it in regards to the cathedral. And um, obviously there's a lot of water in Lincoln as well. So a chance to explore and the parks are beautiful as well. And it's also just a chance, uh, a chance to find your independence as well, which is a, a great thing to do while you're in university. So meeting new people for me was one of the most daunting things, but there are so many ways that I met and I know other people have met their friends and their people as such at university. So obviously your accommodation is sort of the first people you often meet. So that's people in your flat or sometimes those that are in the flat opposite or above or however it works for your accommodation. So there's different things that are usually hosted. So you can attend different events, so such as the Res Life team with us, we host loads of different events, all for accommodations and students are welcome to attend that and meet more things. And then as well, obviously on your course, lecturers are usually very friendly, a lot more than you'd expect. So there's also lots of opportunities for you to get to know your course mates and people from there. And then just generally throughout life in Lincoln, whether you're on a night out or whether that's you're drinking or not drinking, there's so many different opportunities in Lincoln and outside of Lincoln where you can meet different people, just being about your day-to-day -day life or a night out or anything like that. There's, especially during Freshers Week, there's lots of opportunities. So like I was mentioning before, you do get to live independently. Um, and I've just written down a few things that I think would help. Definitely scheduling and having a routine. Um, for example, food prep. Um, this can lead into money management as well, because um, obviously it's your first time being able to handle your own money on your own. So it's definitely imp important to make sure you know you're doing your shopping list and making sure you're only buying essentials, which I'll talk about a little bit more after. Also, you're also um, in charge of your self care as well. So, like Tom mentioned before, um, making sure you do things that you that you love that you're interested in is very important i mentioned budgeting um, and also you may be in a shared accommodation as well so also being able to compromise whether that's making a schedule of who cleans the kitchen or um or other things like that uh, living independently um they're the things that um i would choose to focus on while you're at university so as well as like different social aspects, joining societies can be such an amazing way to also meet new people. So one of our, our one of the girls we work with, she is very much into the rugby society and has made loads of good friends throughout that. There's all different things that you could do with that. I personally have done St. John's Ambulance and the Math Society to follow with my, my university degree. Um, but other than being helpful and you can learn a new skill such as I did through the St. John's, um, it's also, it's a case of it's something for you to learn something new. You might have tried something that you have never tried before, whether it's a sport or a different sort of more social aspect. It might just be something totally different and out of your comfort skill, uh, comfort zone, sorry. But you're able to use it as a form of self-care to get to know people and take some time to yourself as well. So Anna and I are just going to talk about a little bit about what our experience experience was joining university as we're both uh, third years. 
So one of my uh, main fears coming to university, which also Tom mentioned, was um, n not be was being away from home. And um, one of the things I was able to do, it's as simple as making, you know, a family recipe. And um, just the eating the food that you eat from home can, you know, relax them fears of uh, being away from home. And uh, one of my expectations was I expected my, if you are doing A-levels before you enter university, I was expecting my A-level, my university course to be exactly like uh, my university course. And in a good way, it wasn't. Um, it, you're able to expand your knowledge on a subject that you love or a subject that you've chosen, which is something that um, I really enjoyed about university. Um, and one thing um, which I didn't expect or anticipate was to make as many friends uh, as I did. Um, I did have that fear of uh, not making any friends, but to my surprise, uh, not just through my course or through just even meeting them on campus, uh, joining the Res Life team, we're all, all of us are friends and we all had a great time together and meeting other students, it's a great, uh, great time. So my overall experience while being in university has been really good. And for me, I think I was also the, the scared of the homesickness being quite far from home. But I think for me, it was sort of finding my group of people. I had a very group, good group of people around me back in Essex. So finding that and replicating that in a way, I was a bit nervous to do so. But although I haven't necessarily replicated it because all of the friends I've made have been totally different, there's been so many op opportunities for me to get to know and meet new different people that that kind of aspect of not making friends hasn't been an issue for me at all. Um, and I know that if it had been, there are lots of support available for different students and different events that the university holds to introduce people. So my expect expectations sorry, were that the lecturers weren't going to be as friendly as they were. I thought that it was going to be just somebody standing at the front of the classroom. You never speak a word to them and that's it. But realistically, if you email your lecturer with a concern, nine times out of ten, they'll get back to you within a couple of days and be able to help you maybe arrange a one-to-one. -one. They're very friendly, at least here at Lincoln, they definitely are. So and I've had a very positive experience with all of my lecturers. Um, I didn't expect to, to be necessarily as free time as I have. So I expected to be consistently in the library and, and that was gonna be my whole life. But I think that I've been able to make friends where I can do more social things, like go to a coffee shop to study, and things like that or go on a night out to as a form of most self-care to relax to sort of not constantly work in a regard and i think that's very important to to not overwork yourself and as well as shanta like my overall experience has been very positive and there's lots of support options whether that's through the student well-being team student support or your lecturers directly so there's a lot of support available perfect i think that was all we're back <laughs> well, well i say we're back i'm back um thank you so much guys that was really really informative um i just want to ask you first Shante, what made you come want to leave manchester like such a big city and, and come to lincoln i think that's what it was i think it could it was a big city i wanted to try something different um at the time especially you know you're at that age where you think you've outgrown home I think everyone experiences that at some point and that was for me at that point I felt like I outgrew my home and I needed to explore something different and I, I went to several different open days but when I went to Lincoln it just felt like this is where I needed to be so it was um, quite an easy choice for me moving from Manchester to Lincoln. That's really interesting. It's interesting you picked up on the open days actually because I know we've got one on the 29th of November um, so obviously anybody who, who hasn't been to Lincoln, who's watching this and wants to come, obviously you can um, come on the 29th of uh, November. So Anna then, did you get to visit Lincoln before? And obviously you said you're from Essex. So I know there's a direct train from King's Cross from London to Lincoln. Do you use that route or do you take another route to get to, to Lincoln? What was your experiences of the open day? So I actually came through clearing. So I did a, a last minute open day quite late on so that I could sort of decide where to go at the last minute because things had fallen through with my initial university. And I, I came about and I tried different universities. I tried ones that were closer to home and ones that were further. This one was the furthest away, but I just sort of felt like it felt the nicest for me. 
it felt like the right place for me to be and somewhere where I could be comfortable and feel safe and settle into that kind of area. So I was lucky enough, we have got family friends not too far, so we didn't take that train. But if I was visiting back down to Essex now, there is that direct route into London. So whether it is you're going to London or anywhere down south, that is really convenient. And I think it takes just shy of two hours. So it's not a long time at all. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, yeah, I think everything that you've touched on really resonates with me, although I didn't actually study uh, at Lincoln. Um, I'm from London and I moved away from home as well. So everything that we've kind of touched on today from homesickness, I think I've, I felt that. And and I don't actually think I knew where any of the services were for for a long time when I started university um I think maybe into my second and my third year and actually if I'd known um sooner then maybe the transition would have been a bit, a bit smoother as well so I think it's really really important obviously that students find out about the services that are available to them at university whatever university you go to um go and visit an open day um and like I said Lincoln's is is the 29th of November um so that is yeah coming up very soon in under a week um I know that while holding a summer school as well I think in the end of July which will help with transition so I think that's from the 24th to the 26th of July um for those students who kind of want to be of a taste or a flavor of what it would be like to be at Lincoln and obviously there's that uh that you know the few days that you can spend at the university which helps with the transition as well to, to university um thank you so so much um for your input because I think it's really really helpful to have students who are currently studying who can talk about their experience and why they've chosen the university or why they just chose university in general why it was the right option for them um and actually you know it can be quite daunting it can be quite scary um but you will have support there will be other people in the same boat as you or a similar boat to you um and there are people that you can talk to um so if i could just if we could have tom back um and I don't know, if, Tom, if you, is there anything that else that you wanted to say um, or ask Anna or Shante before we finish? Um... Sure. So for the open days, you know, there's um, a lot of different services around the uni you can talk to as well. If they ask those questions, you know, student wellbeing, we've got a stand there. So if you've got any questions about that, please come and chat to us. I'm pretty sure Res Life will be there as well. There's lots of great report services you can chat to. Um, I suppose the question, yeah, for Anna and Shante, what is your favourite thing about Lincoln now you've been here for a, a while now? That's a good one. I think that for me, it's Lincoln, like as a city, everything is on your doorstep. So I live in St Mark's accommodation and it takes me not even five minutes to the nearest supermarket, five minutes to a gym, five minutes to town and um, across the road from campus. So everything is so close and you're available to to get to anywhere really easy as well as the train station and then direct routes as Curtis said into London and places like that it's very easy to to travel as well. I think for me it's definitely the community obviously we do follow the one community values which are extremely important but it's very evident within Lincoln City wherever you go everybody's extremely nice everybody's willing to help and I think that's one of the things that did draw me to Lincoln is, is with how um, willing um, the community is just to help uh, students. I think both those things are, are so important. I think, first of all, and you're talking about affordability and uh, the cost of living and a lot of students actually being worried about, you know, how much things cost and, and how expensive university can kind of seem. And I think having things on your doorstep and you don't have to pay for transport or an Uber or a train to go somewhere or anything like that, I think that's that's really, really important. Um, and, you know, it's fantastic that Lincoln has that. And of course, Shantae, you talking um, about the one community and feeling straight away, feeling at home and feeling supported. I think that's really, really key. And I know there'll be people that will be watching um, this webinar that are from further away, that are from London or from the South Coast or from the North that, you know, will be thinking, actually, I need to find a university that has all of these services and has all of these systems and, and feels like a community. Um, so it's fantastic that you've said that without us <laughs> asking you to say that. Um, that's always really, really helpful. Um, I just want to say thank you so much um, to, to the three of you for um, being part of this webinar. Um, and thank you for for, for making it amazing. Um, and thank you to everybody who's, who's joined the webinar um, and has watched this. Um, and I don't think there's anything else that I really want to say. Just thank you so much for being part of it. Uh, I hope you found it useful. 
Um, if you do have any uh, questions about that, you can find obviously more information on our website. You can email us uh, at inquiries at lincoln.ac.uk. You can visit our website. Um, you can use various of the services that are available uh, on the website. And of course, there'll be a banner running on the screen below, I'm hoping, um, which has some contact details as well. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, and we hope you found it very, very useful.